Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are now learning the chapter Human Health and Diseases. Today we are going to discuss Cancer. Cancer is one of the most dreaded diseases of human beings. Globally, lots of people are affected by this disease these days. In India itself, millions of people are affected by cancer and a large number of them die annually because of this disease. So, what is the reason behind the formation of cancer in the body or oncogenic transformation of our normal cells? What are the treatments available? What are the ways to control this disease? All these have been the critical research areas in biological field as well as medicinal field. Usually our cells undergo mitosis in order for growth and repair. But this mitosis is highly regulated controlled cell division. But sometimes it becomes uncontrolled, abnormal and excessive mitotic division. So when it loses this property of control, then it will lead to mass of cells called cancerous cells. These cancerous cells may form tumors. But normally this is not happening in our body because of a certain property called the contact inhibition. That is, when a cell is dividing, how much it has to divide or how long it has to divide. That is determined by contact with another cell. Okay, suppose I have a wound here. You know the skin cells will multiply in order to cover or heal that wound. But once it is multiplying and it reaches the next cell, touches the next cell, it knows that I have to stop here. That property is contact inhibition. But unfortunately, in cancer patients, this contact inhibition is lost. As a result, the tumor formation happens because cells don't stop dividing. They divide repeatedly resulting in mass of cells called a tumor. So the branch of biology dealing with a cancer is called a oncology and the doctors specialized in this area are called a oncologists. So when we talk about tumors, all tumors are not cancerous tumors. So cancerous tumors are called a malignant tumors. So other tumors are called a benign tumor. So what are the major differences between benign tumors and a malignant tumor? Actually benign tumors are having very smooth and regular or a defined shape or border. Whereas malignant tumors have irregular and it is not defined or it is not smooth structure. And benign tumors show a very slow growth. They multiply very slowly over a period of several years only they show the growth. Whereas malignant tumors multiply very fast and they attain the growth very quickly. Another difference is benign tumors are confined to their localized area. Wherever they are starting, they will be just staying there without invading into nearby organs. So they just slowly, slowly grow in that region without disturbing any neighboring organs. Whereas malignant tumors are not like that. They are very rapid in their growth. At the same time, they are highly invasive. They will protrude into the neighboring organs and they damage those organs also. And another thing is that malignant tumors will deprive the other tissues of the vital nutrients because these cells will be taking up all nutrients for their growth. But benign tumors are not doing that. <coughs> another most dreaded property of malignant tumors is metastasis. Metastasis means the malignant tumors can have uh, cells slowing off from it or falling off from it. So if it is taken by blood or lymph and carried to different parts of the body, there starts a new tumor. So that is one of the most dreaded properties of cancer which is not shown by benign tumor. As I told, they are confined. And these are not that fatal but malignant tumors are fatal or dangerous. The benign tumors are usually the uh, uterine fibroids and other tumors formed in the body may be benign tumors. But uh, benign tumors most of the time they are uh, not fatal. But rarely certain cases like in the brain tissues and all uh, depending upon the region where they are forming and the pressure they are applying on the vital nervous uh, areas it may be uh, dangerous sometimes. Otherwise it is not that harmful like our malignant tumors. So when we discuss uh, different types of cancers there are major three categories carcinomas, sarcoma and uh, leukemia and lymphomas. 
So carcinomas are actually the types of cancer affecting our epithelial tissue or the lining of the internal organs, glands, etc. We know epithelial tissue is making up our skin or the uh, covering tissue or the protective tissue. So skin cancer is the most common type in this and this is the one of the most common types of cancer among the uh, incidents in human beings. For example, 85% of the types of cancers are carcinomas only. They can be brain carcinomas, oral carcinoma, lung carcinoma, gastric carcinoma, colon carcinoma, or cervical or prostate, uh, breast carcinoma. So uh, in females, the most common type of ca cancer is breast cancer followed by cervical cancer. Whereas in males, it is the prostate cancer affecting the prostate gland of male. Mesodermal origin tissues may get a cancer called a sarcoma. For example, our connective tissues like bone, fat, cartilage, etc. Uh, osteosarcoma is the bone cancer. Myosarcoma is the muscle, muscular cancer. Adipocytes are affected by liposarcoma. Now the third type is a leukemia or lymphomas that is affecting the uh, hemopoietic cells that is our blood uh, cancer that is leukemia is called the blood cancer where uncontrolled multiplication of the white blood cells will be occurring. Let's now talk about the causes of cancer. Before that, we should know what is neoplasty. So the formation of new tumor is called a neoplasty. So neoplastic cells means tumor cells or cancerous cells. So the substances which can trigger cancer can be biological agents, physical agents or a chemical agents. So these substances are together called a carcinogens. So carcinogens are the agents which can cause cancer or trigger cancer or tumor formation. So they are categorized like this. First is physical. Physical means mainly the radiations. You know radiations are always dangerous to us because they can cause mutation. So these mutated cells do not respond to the regulatory reflexes or signals of the body. That's why they are multiplying uncontrollably leading to cancer cells. So the radiations fall into two categories. They can be ionizing radiations or non-ionizing radiations. Ionizing radiations are X-rays, gamma rays, etc. Non-ionizing radiations are UV rays. Both can cause cancer. You know, UV exposure can lead to skin cancer. You have learned about it. Then, uh, other than this, uh, co that the constant irritation also can cause cancer. You must have heard that people telling don't chew gums uh, very often that can lead to oral cancer. Or, and, uh, you know, people in Kashmir, they keep kangri uh, under their dress, near their skin to keep themselves warm. But over a period of time, that constant uh, irritation can also lead to cancer. That's called a kangri cancer. Or, uh, very few studies have shown that Sharp teeth can also cause tongue cancer or oral cancer, but still we need to have more uh, evidences and uh, studies in this field. Then chemicals. Chemicals, we know many chemicals can cause cancer. The number one is tobacco, which contains chemicals that can uh, trigger cancer of the uh, lung. That is lung cancer is a major threat. But apart from that, these people can get urinary bladder cancer, throat cancer, and those who are chewing the tobacco, they get oral cancer also. But not only this uh, tobacco, the flavoring agents or artificial uh, coloring agents, flavoring agents or uh, uh, preservatives, the synthetic food and uh, many processed food and also some hormonal imbalance in the body can cause cancer. Third type is biological agents means they can cause uh, the, the, the cancer in human beings that they are certain viruses. So these viruses are called uh, oncogenic viruses which on infection can lead to cancer. One example is uh, the cervical cancer in female caused due to virus. Or otherwise even uh, uh, in our body the normal cells have cellular oncogenes or proto-oncogenes. They are uh, normal under certain conditions but uh, once they are triggered they may turn into the cancer cells or the neoplastic cells. So cancer is a dreaded disease or it is very harmful disease. So the success rate of the treatment definitely depends upon the stage at which it is being diagnosed. The earlier you detect, the better the chances of survival. That is the case of cancer. In such a scenario, detection is very important. So how can we find out whether a patient is cancerous? So usually if it is a blood cancer and all, blood examination will prove. That, that is, uh, they will see large number of uh, white blood cells than the normal count. Another test is biopsy. That means T 
tissues from our body usually if also we are removing any organ or tissue surgically from our body biopsy is a compulsory test it will be sent by, from the hospital itself for biopsy it's a histopathological test where they take thin slices or uh, of this uh, tissue which is removed from the body and they will be staining it and keeping under the microscope and they will find that these cells have a tendency of a division means their nucleus will be larger uh, nucleolus is very big mitochondria are very active so because they are in a state of division okay so that can lead to an identification of cancer so biopsy test is one of the leading techniques in diagnosing cancer otherwise uh, fine needle aspiration uh, cytology is also there that is if there is a cyst or a, in the tumor in the breast and all they will be injecting a fine needle and uh, taking some fluid from that and test for the presence of tumor then um, in the case of cervical cancer which i mentioned it is caused by a virus where continuous infection by papilloma virus human papilloma virus may lead to cervical cancer so usually uh, the women of ages the 35 above or 40 above uh, should undergo pap smear test annually to detect the presence or chance of the infection by human papilloma virus or the chance of uh, cervical cancer the same way uh, there is a test called a mammogram which also has to be done uh, a period annually in order to detect the presence of any tumor or lump in the breast tissues also. Then uh, normal other types of diagnostic tools are x-rays where we get the uh, image of the uh, bones and all we can easily detect but sometimes the tumor may be within the organ which may not be visible in one x-ray then we can go for 3d images using ct scan where we get three dimensional view of the organ so that even if the tumor is inside it may be we may be able to find it out or mri scan in that also we are using magnetic field and the images are formed a three dimensional way to detect the presence of cancer very recently we have started using monoclonal antibodies also to detect the presence of antigens so these are the various uh, methods of diagnosis and detection of cancer. Now talking about the treatments available for cancer, uh, first of all uh, surgery. We remove the entire tumor and associated lymph nodes surgically uh, to uh, eliminate those cancer cells from the body. Then followed by that radiation or chemotherapy can be done. They irradiate the cancer cells using radiations and uh, thereby killing all the cancer cells but very restricted use of this radiation is done so that the normal surrounding tissues are not affected by this. So usually for radiation, cobalt radiation or cobalt therapy, iodine therapy or x-ray are used. Then third is the chemotherapy. The chem chemotherapy what we do is we are using chemotherapeutic drugs which can kill the cancer cells or rather the DNA replication in those cells are stopped so that the further multiplication is not happening. So uh, there are many uh, chemicals that we obtain from plants which are effectively used in chemotherapeutic drugs but most of the time the side effects of this is very severe like uh, uh, hair loss, anemia, all these can be or nausea are the symptoms of this or the side effects of these treatments. Another problem with these cancer cells is these tumors are actually not detected or destroyed by immune system. They escape the site of our immune system so they flourish well in the body. So in such cases, we can give some immunomodifiers to the body like alpha interferons which will develop more the efficiency of our immune system and thereby target these sort of tumor cells and destroy them. And apart from this, we are using certain monoclonal antibodies to attach certain proteins to our cells so that our immune system will be able to kill off the tumor cells themselves. So these are the main points that we should know about cancer. If you have any doubt, you can ask in the comment box. So if you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.